Let's read descriptions of proto-Semites. How do biologists describe the physical appearance of early Semitic populations, such as Akkadians, Chaldeans, Elamites, Arabians, etc.? Beginning first with the Natufians, the ancestors of Semites, according to the book titled An Introduction to African Civilizations, it reads, there is evidence that some 7,000 or 8,000 years ago, a black Negroid race inhabited Palestine. Even Sir Arthur Keith agrees that they are clearly Negroid, distinctly prognathinous, with wide faces, flat noses, and long, large heads. Sir Arthur goes on to say that these early Palestinian blacks may have been the ancestors of the Semites or Arabs of biblical times. According to the book titled Contributions to the Anthropology of Iran, it reads, In a private conversation, he writes that this sequence is correct for Mesopotamia, as for example at Kish, where the Mediterranean proto-Semite is under the Samaritan Alpine. He adds that the primitive Mediterranean type equals the Galas, etc. of Somaliland and Kenya colony, which in turn equal the Proto-Semites. So Proto-Semites would look like the Galas or Oromo people in Somaliland and Kenya colony. And so here are depictions of Oromo or Galas and this is how Proto-Semites are believed to have looked according to their remains found at Kish in Mesopotamia. The Galas or Oromo are clearly a dark-skinned people ranging from medium brown to black in complexion with wavy and curly hair. So this is how proto-Semites likely looked according to their remains. Let's look more at these remains found at Kish in Mesopotamia. But first a quick breakdown on Kish. According to the book titled Approaching Chaos, it reads, Archaeologists have noticed that Semitic tribes referred to as proto-Akkadians from Syria and northern Mesopotamia began to migrate south in waves. These tribes created a new kingdom on the north of the Alluvial Plain in a province interestingly called Uri by the Sumerians in the south, but otherwise described as the Kish civilization. According to the book titled Report on the Human Remains found at Kish, it reads, this report on the human remains found at Kish by the Field Museum and Oxford Expedition is based on the material excavated in the Old Sumerian Palace at Eastern Kish. All remains from the palace, or in our terminology, Mound A, belong to the period immediately preceding the age of Sargon of Akkad, and are contemporary with the last 4th dynasty of Kish circa 2900 through 2800 BC. The names of the eight rulers of this period indicate clearly a Semitic dynasty. The population at Kish in the period to which the human remains at the palace belong should be therefore very mixed. Dr. Bingston finds two long-headed races in the palace skulls at Kish which he designates as Euro-African and Mediterranean. There can be little hesitation in ascribing this type to the people who have been called by Elliot Smith the Brown Race. And according to the book titled General History of Africa Ancient Civilizations of Africa and it reads, particularly when we note once more that Mediterranean is not a synonym for white, Elliot Smith's brown or Mediterranean race being near the mark, Elliot Smith classes these proto-Egyptians as a branch of what he calls the brown race, which is the same as Sergi's Mediterranean or Eurafrican race. The term brown in this context refers to skin color and is simply a euphemism for Negro. And according to the book titled The Ancient Egyptians and the Origin of Civilizations, by Elliot Smith and it reads, the Mediterranean and East African literals into the whole peninsula of Arabia and the shores of the Persian Gulf. In other words, Syria 
Arabia, Mesopotamia, and Sumer were parts of the original domain of the brown race. The Proto-Egyptians, but there can be no doubt, whatever that their dark hair was associated with dark eyes and a bronzed complexion, wall paintings and statues with black eyes and ruddy brown skin. Brown skins and irises of a black or dark brown color as the living populations of northeastern Africa which most nearly resemble the proto-Egyptians in stature have a coppery brown skin color. We must look upon the old Egyptian custom of representing men of their nationality with red skin. And returning to the book report on the human remains found at Kish and it reads, these two types both belong to a group of humanity which is classed as a single race by Hayden who while apparently associating the brown race with the Mediterranean race includes a further group the Semites of whom only one group the Bedouin here concerns us and according to the book contributions to the anthropology of Iran the year African after Hayden and it reads skin dark complexion hair dark eyes dark head very long nose often broad pregnathanism often slight this is Hayden describing the year African and by the way a long skull pregnathanism and a wide nose are often descriptions of negroid type peoples according to the book titled the passing of the great race it reads the Mediterranean race was first defined by Sergi, who also called it Eur-African. The Mediterranean race originated in Africa and is closely related to the Negro, both being long-skulled peoples descended from a common stock, the Eur-African. And according to the book titled Archaeology and the Sumerian Problem, the people responsible for the al umbut stage of culture belong to judge by their distribution to the Middle Eastern section of the Mediterranean race to the brown race of Professor Elliot Smith in fact. As to the characteristics of the dolicocephalic population of Mesopotamia, Dr. Buxton distinguishes a brown Mediterranean and a brown Your African type. They are in fact often included together in the term Mediterranean. But as distinguished by Dr. Buxton, the brown Mediterranean variety seems later and related with the West, whereas the Eurafrican type seems more ancient and has connections with the East. The brown Eurafrican variety of the dolicocephalic population at Kish, the other variety, the brown Mediterranean type, which is related with the West, can hardly have been anything but Semitic, for it is certain that we have to account for Mediterranean Semites from Arabia at an early date in Mesopotamia. Sergi argued that the Mediterranean race had in fact originated in Africa, probably in the Sahara region, and that it also included a number of dark-skinned peoples from the African continent, such as Ethiopians and Somalis. Sergi also asserted that the Semites were a branch of the Eurafricans who were closely related to the Mediterraneans. Based on ancient remains of Semites found in Mesopotamia and other parts of the Middle East, so Semites who are a Eurafrican people would have likely resembled Ethiopians and as you can see, Ethiopians, they're an obvious dark skinned population ranging from light brown to medium brown to black in complexion. And they also would have resembled Somalis, another dark skinned population that is obviously black skinned but also has brown variants. Ethiopians and Somalis are another good example of how proto Semites, early Semitic populations, would look. And according to the book titled Diagnosis in Assyrian, and Babylonian medicine, it reads, Akkadians and Aramaeans 
came from the homeland of Semitic peoples, usually placed in the Syrian desert. They were presumably a medium complexion with dark hair and brown eyes like modern Arabs. So early Semitic populations such as Akkadians and Arameans had a medium brown complexion and dark hair and brown eyes and they're also described as looking like modern Arabs that have these features. And as we can see there are clearly modern Arab populations that are indeed medium brown skin with dark hair and brown eyes. This is yet another example of how ancient or proto-Semitic populations would have looked. According to ancient remains of Semitic populations found at Kish and Mesopotamia, Semites were described as the brown race, the brown Mediterranean race, the brown Euro-African race. These three classifications are basically described as African either Negroid or East African. With that being said, let's look at ancient depictions of Semites. So as we can see, looking at ancient depictions of Semites in Mesopotamia made by Semites themselves and even Egyptians, they depicted themselves dark skinned, specifically with medium brown skin, black hair and dark eyes. And looking at the depictions of Semites, it's no wonder why it's believed, according to their remains, that they resembled Africans. Many of these depictions of Semites come from the Bronze Age in Syria. This is important because Abraham likely lived in the Middle Bronze Age. The wives of Isaac and Jacob come from Syria as well in the Middle Bronze Age. According to the book titled The Aramaeans, Their Ancient History, Culture, Religion by E. Limsky, it reads, In any hypothesis, only camels should be used for transporting people and goods on such long journeys. And biblical writers, when telling the mission of Abraham's servant to Amram Nahorim, or Jacob's flight from Haran, knew it perfectly well. Thus Abraham's servant chose ten camels from his master's herd, while Jacob sent his sons and wives on camels. There is no question that those stories refer to a period when domesticated camels were widespread in Syria and Palestine so that people knew their endurance and physical possibilities. The so-called priestly material of the Pentateuch designates Amram Nahorim by the name Padam Amram, and the Hebrew term Padam must be explained in the light of Akkadian Padamu, road, track, then the name Padam Amram used in ancient Hebrew should originally have designated this road to Amram. However, the actual use of this phrase does not correspond to such a meaning, but refers clearly to a region of northern Syria. So Amram Nehorim or Padam Amram is basically located in modern day Syria. According to the ancient Greeks, there was a dark-skinned population of Syrians. This dark-skinned Syrian population was distinct from the lighter-skinned population 
in Asia Minor. According to the book titled Diagnosis in Assyrian and Babylonian Medicine, and it reads, Akkadians and Aramaeans came from the homeland of Semitic peoples, usually placed in the Syrian desert. They were presumably a medium complexion with dark hair and brown eyes, like modern Arabs. And according to the book, The Monuments of the Hittites and the Bilingual Hittite, and it reads, The white Syrians whom Strabo places in this region must be Hittites. Indeed, they are specially contrast with the black Syrians who are said to live east of the Amenas and must consequently be Aramaeans. And according to the book, A Dictionary, Greek and Roman Geography, and it reads, Lysio Syri, the ancient name of the Syrians inhabiting Cappadonia, by which they were distinguished from the more southern Syrians who were of a darker complexion. And according to the book titled, The Great Empires and Civilizations of the Ancient East, and it reads, the Chaba Arabs, the present possessors of the more southern parts of Babylonia, are nearly black, and the black Syrians of whom Strabo speaks seem intended to represent the Babylonians. Interestingly enough, there actually are depictions of very dark-skinned Syrians or Aramaeans. One of these depictions was made by the Assyrians and the other by the Egyptians. A fresco from Til Barsep which shows Aramaeans and two heads of Bedouins from Syria. There are interesting parallels between the depictions of these Syrians, such as the locked hair and the band around the head. Perhaps the Egyptians and the Assyrians were depicting the same type of Syrian or Aramean people in the region, but clearly these Syrians or Aramaeans are depicted with dark brown, even black skin with dark black hair and dark eyes. But without a doubt, the description and depiction of these Syrians and Aramaeans gives a good clue as to how Abraham and the rest of his family, such as the wives of Isaac and Jacob, could have looked. With that being said, let's dig a bit deeper. We know according to the scriptures, Abraham was called a Chaldean. Now I understand that the specific ethnic group Chaldeans may not have existed in the time of Abraham, since Abraham more than likely lived in the Middle Bronze Age. But I still feel like understanding the phenotype of ancient Chaldeans can help us. The Israelites more than likely were comparing Abraham to the Chaldeans. Of course, I'm not saying based on phenotype, but rather shared ancestry, perhaps. Considering that Josephus believed the descendants of Arphaxad are Chaldeans, whether or not he was right or wrong, it still seems like the Israelites are basically saying that Abraham has a shared ancestry with the Chaldeans. With that being said, how are Chaldeans described? First of all, in terms of comparing ancient remains, it has been stated by archaeologists and anthropologists such as Sir Arthur Keith that Natufians had some connection to the ancient Ur of the Chaldeans. According to the book, an introduction to African civilizations, it reads, There is evidence that some 7,000 or 8,000 years ago, a black Negroid race inhabited Palestine. Even Sir Arthur Keith agrees that they are clearly Negroid, distinctly prognathinous with wide faces, flat noses, and long, large heads. Sir Arthur goes on to say that these early black Palestinians 
may have been the ancestors of the Semites or Arabs of biblical times. Other markings found on these skeletons seem to indicate that the early black Palestinian had connections with ancient Ur of the Chaldees. And this is a reconstruction of a Mesolithic Natufian man based on the Jericho skull excavated in Israel. Ancient DNA analysis of Natufian samples has revealed that they were ancestral to the Levantine Neolithic population, forebearers of the contemporary Semitic speaking groups of the Middle East. So with that being said, how are ancient Chaldeans described as looking? According to the book Prehistoric Nations, it reads, all the best qualified investigators agree that the evidence already obtained shows conclusively the Kushite or Ethiopian origin of Chaldea. And according to Smith's Bible Dictionary, Chaldeans, it reads, it appears that the Chaldeans were in the earliest times merely one out of many Kushite tribes inhabiting the great alluvial plain known afterwards as Chaldea or Babylonia. And according to the book titled History of Ancient Civilizations, it reads, the Chaldeans in the plain of the Euphrates, they were peoples of sedentary and peaceful pursuits. Their skin was dark, the hair short and thick, the lips strong, some term them Cushites, others Hamites. And according to the book, a book of the beginnings, and it reads, the primitive Chaldeans and Babylonians were known to the Greeks by the names of Chaldeans and Caffeans. The Caffeans were synonymous with Ethiopians. And according to the book, The Beginnings of Civilization, it reads, the Cushite Arabians and possibly the Chaldeans, the founders of the first historic civilization in Babylonia, being certainly Hamitic, though early mixed with Semitic tribes long before the Assyrian rule. Ancient Chaldeans are described as looking like Hamites, Cushites, and Ethiopians. Of course, we know what Cushites or Ethiopians look like, basically East African populations. Now what's interesting about the description of Chaldeans is that we actually have depictions of Chaldeans by the Greeks. These Chaldeans have dark skin, specifically medium brown, and dark hair and eyes. It's no wonder why they are described as looking like Hamites, Cushites, and Ethiopians. This is perhaps a good representation as to how Abraham may have looked. We can actually look further when it comes to the description of Chaldeans. Chaldeans have been said to look similar to the Elamites. According to the book titled Herbert Lectures, Lectures of the Origin and Growth of Religion, and it reads, As, however, M. Dulafoy's excavations on the site of Susa have brought to light emerald bricks of the Elamite period on which a black race of mankind is portrayed. It may mean that the primitive Sumerian population of Chaldea was really black skinned. And according to the book titled Prehistoric Nations, it reads, the region known as Susnia was politically connected with Chaldea from the earliest times. It was occupied by people of the same race who in the course of time may have developed a Susian dialect of the common language. This region was probably introduced in the district first colonized by the Kushites. Its ruins are of great antiquity and show plainly their Kushite origin. And according to the book titled The Negro in the New World, it reads, The Elamites of Mesopotamia appear to have been a negroid people with kinky hair and to have transmitted this racial type to the Jews and Syrians. Chaldeans and Elamites have been described as looking similar to each other. They have been described as having black skin or looking like Cushites or even negroid. With that being said, let's look at depictions of ancient Elamites. Perhaps this can help us when it comes to the phenotype of the Chaldeans and therefore perhaps even Abraham.
As we can clearly see, the Elamites are depicted as being dark skinned, specifically black to dark brown with thick hair and dark eyes. It's no wonder why they are described as being Cushites or Negroid looking based on the way they depicted themselves. But returning to the subject, Chaldeans and Elamites are described as looking similar, which seems to be true. Perhaps the Biblical Abraham looked like this. Abraham's skin tone, dark medium brown, and black thick hair, and dark brown eyes. What's interesting about the connection between Chaldeans, Elamites, and Abraham is that according to the scriptures, Elamites descend from Shem, son of Elam. And according to the Book of Jubilees, or fact said, an ancient ancestor of Abraham married an Elamite, which would mean this Elamite blood is in the lineage of Abraham. The Book of Jubilees may reflect ancient tradition when it mentions a son or daughter in some versions of Elam named Susan, whose daughter Rashinia married Arphaxad, progenitor of another branch of Shemites. Shushan or Susa was the ancient capital of the Elamite Empire. Daniel chapter 8 verse 2. Book of Jubilees chapter 8. Arphaxad took to himself a wife, and her name was Rasuja, the daughter of of Susan, the daughter of Elam. Whether this story in the Book of Jubilees is true or not, Elamites and Chaldeans are related through the bloodline of Shem, and the description of the Elamites and Chaldeans matches perfectly with how Shem's descendants are described as looking. According to Rabbi Eleazar, he blessed Shem and his sons black but calmly, and he gave them the inhabitable earth. The Persian historian Tabri quotes Abin Abbas as saying, Born to Noah were Shem, whose descendants' colors are a black complexion with a light brownish undertone and a dark blackish brown. And Bar Habrekah speaks of Noah dividing the world among his three sons, Shem, the land of the browns. And according to the history of the messengers and kings, the children of Shem settled in the center of the earth which is between Satma and the sea, and between Yemen and Syria. Allah made the prophets from them, revealed the books to them, made them beautiful, gave them a black complexion, luminous and free of blemish. Now speaking on the ancestors of Semites, recall that Natufians and the ancient Ur of the Chaldees had a connection. Furthermore, Chaldeans have a connection with the Elamites, an interesting picture begins to emerge. Looking at the reconstruction of a Natufian as well as the depiction of Chaldeans by Greeks and also the depiction of Elamites by themselves, we get a pretty good idea that all three groups do look very similar. Therefore, one could conclude that Abraham would have looked like Natufian or Chaldean or Elamite who themselves are described as looking like Hamites, Cushites, and Ethiopians, even Negroid. And this is interesting because both Shem's descendants and Ham's descendants are both described as being dark-skinned, brown and black in complexion. And going by the depictions, they're clearly dark-skinned, ranging from medium brown to dark brown, even black, with thick hair and dark brown eyes. 